The term flow control might ring a bell from some of your other studies, but it describes our ability to change which line of code is executed next. You've likely already covered this in your high-level programming languages with if statements, loops, and subroutines. So far in assembly, the only control we've had over the execution of the program has been to halt the execution. But here comes a brand new instruction, BRA, a mnemonic for branch which sends us to a different line next. Now, this is where you'll see why I've been showing the fetch decode execute cycle in such detail so far. Anyway, here's a simple program I've written in assembly to count backwards from the number 128, subtracting eight each time, so that when it runs, we should see 128, 120, 112, and so on as the outputs. Now I say it aloud, it's not quite as simple a program as I would have liked to have made. But it's animated now, it's staying in the video. Starting the assembler, it fetches instruction 1, moving the program counter to the value 2. Remember, the program counter is always pointing at the next instruction that we'll be going to. Decoding this instruction, we're going to load the data value from line 6 into the accumulator. This is the value 128, which is just copied across. Our next instruction is our old friend output, that will put the value from the accumulator onto the screen. Our user is going to see the number 128 appear. Line 3 lets us practice the subtract instruction we learned about a few minutes ago, remembering that this takes the value from the line number given as the operand away from the current value in the accumulator. In our case, line 7 contains the data value 8, so the sum is 128 minus 8, giving us an answer of 120. Now line 4 looks exciting, it's got our new instruction in it. Fetching line 4 increments the program counter to line 5, that's the next instruction that we should be loading. However, what our branch instruction does is that rather than messing around with the value in the accumulator, it is actually able to change the value of the program counter. Why is that important? Well, the program counter points to where we're going next. Currently, the CPU expects to go to line 5 next. The branch instruction will change that. Watch as it executes and replaces the current value of the program counter with the operand of the instruction, meaning that the program counter's value is now 0 too. In other words, the execution of the instruction just tells the computer to go to a different line next. When we get back to the fetch part of the cycle, the computer looks to the program counter to identify which line to load next. Now it sees that it should be loading line 2, so it does just that. It fetches line 2. Once fetched, it increments the program counter as normal because it always points to the next instruction we need to fetch. Decoding line 2 shows that this instruction outputs the contents of the accumulator to the screen, pushing the value 120 onto the user. Line 3 once again tells us to subtract the data value at line 7 from the value in the accumulator. That gives us a sum of 120 minus 8, leaving us with 112, which is placed back into the accumulator. Line 4 is our branch instruction again, and once again changes the program counter value to line 2. When the fetch part of the cycle is used again, we essentially move back to line 2. Line 2 once again outputs the value of the accumulator to the user, making 112 appear on the screen. The subtract instruction takes another 8 away from the value of the accumulator. 112 minus 8 gives us 104, which is placed back into the accumulator. Here, we're again at our branch instruction, and you've guessed it, this will change the value of the program counter to point back to line 2 as the next line to fetch. When it does fetch, it loads the instruction from line 2 and increments the program counter as normal. And at this point, you might have noticed that we've actually built an infinite loop. There's no escaping from this loop, no way to terminate it, so this program will do the 8 times table backwards from the number 128 forever. I'm not going to animate that. You get the idea. Let's knock it on the head. Finally, we have a complete set of instructions that we need to keep in our heads for the practical exam. If you fancy having this beauty of a diagram up in your classroom, 
then pressure your teacher to get onto the lessonhacker.com website and buy a copy of this poster. Let's get our merch sales funding the videos, eh?